Hi, I'm Josh, a member of the team here at Portswigger, and I'm here today to talk to you about the V2 beta of our BCheck language. Now, we released BCheck last year, and this is the first major iteration that we've had of the BCheck language since release. We released them in September 2023, and this new functionality was available for the first time in Burpsuit Professional 2023.10.2. It's filled with features requested by the community, so we really hope that you'll appreciate and enjoy to use them. If you'd like to find more about B-Checks in general and what they are, you can watch Scanner Dave's Burp Speak Short. Now, the first bit of functionality that we introduced in this new version of the language is the ability to retrieve the insertion point base value. Now, based on feedback, we realized that this was quite a big omission in the language, because without this, then you might not be able to detect the presence of a vulnerability, which is the point of B-Checks. Now, with the insertion point base value variable, you can retrieve this in your scan. So let's see how it works. This speed check determines whether or not your server is vulnerable to the JWT non-attack. To do this, we use the insertion point base value variable to check for a JWT in the insertion point. If this is the case, we check for the susceptibility of the server. We do this by changing the alg value to none and then remove the signature. We then reissue the request and check that the status code hasn't changed since the base response was issued. To remove false positives, we don't change the algorithm, but instead remove the signature from the token and then check to see if the response code has changed. Validating the applicability of the B check to reduce the number of requests and processing power needed, and then double checking the result to reduce false positives is best practice for writing B checks. We'll now run the B check to show you what the result is. If we go to issue activity, we can see that the issue has been found. You can also now run B checks once per path. This means that if you have audit items on multiple paths, the run per path B check will only run on each of those paths. Here's how you can use that. This B check traverses a list of extensions to test whether or not there are exposed backup files on a server. To do this, we use the given path syntax and then use the replacing path syntax to modify the path based on the vulnerability that we're trying to detect. With a new raise issue and continue syntax, a single B check can now raise multiple issues. Now this is particularly useful if you're using the run for each syntax. Let's see how we can do this. Because this B-check uses run for each, we can now use the new report issue and continue syntax to report this issue and then continue with the rest of the B-check. Now, any given B-check can raise an issue and give that issue a name, which isn't just the B-check name. This is useful if you're again using run for each when you're raising multiple issues inside a B-check, as now each issue can have its own name. Let's see how we can do that. You can see on here as well that we're again using the run for each syntax, so using the name parameter in the raise issue and continue block here is particularly useful. Finally, if you're sending raw requests using bchecks, you can now reference burp's user agent string instead of having to hard code it directly into the bcheck. This is how you can do that. You can see here that we're sending a raw request and we're using the new user agent variable to retrieve the user agent rather than hard coding it in. We hope that you'll find these features useful. We've covered a lot in this video, so be sure to check out our GitHub repo for more information on how you can use all of these functionalities in practice. You can also check out this repo for more examples on using B-Checks and also the B-Check Helper BAP in Burp. These are really great ways to learn more about B-Checks. Thanks for watching.